hello, Nigeria. There's no better place to be, so don't you ever change that dial. What's up, everybody? It's Kabam Zasukwa, and you're watching Hello, Nigeria. be like the most beautiful talent anyone can have. I'm so jealous. Oh, don't worry, he'll probably teach you. Are you gonna teach me? Oh yeah. How long does it take to learn? Uh, probably three months. Hey, Why three you months. Professional? You okay. have to do it over and over and over. Training starts on Monday. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined in the studio by Abe Cheche, saxophonist here in Nigeria. And of course, he's going to take us through his journey, where he is today, and we'll be speaking about a whole lot more. Welcome to the show. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank you so I much. I think you really have made it in life. You have a lot of money. Your, chair, your necklace is shining, <laughs> bling, bling. Your saxophone bling bling, wristwatch bling bling. Wow. Everything is just bling blinging. <laughs> Everything is just attracting stars. Ah! That's God. They say you should not I'm attract stars because in this day and age, you can't just wear bling bling up and down. We have to be careful these days. have to be really careful and walk around with your ID card. Okay, okay. It's I have good to have me. you. Thank you so much. So you mentioned to Leila that it would take three months to learn how to play the sax. Was that how long it took you? No. I've been playing for over 20 years now. So I've been doing this for a while. Play with uh, a lot of. Uh, Artist here in Nigeria, play with the band, play with Dede Mabiaku, Femi Kuti, uh, Righteous Man, Oris Willeke, Daddy Shoki, a lot of them. So I play with them. So and uh, also uh, when I travel out of the country, I share stage with uh, Michael Bolton. Uh, Michael Bolton. Yeah. Look how he says it so casually. So casually, like you know? Michael Bolton. <laughs> uh, Black Eyed Peas and uh, Black Eyed Peas. Yes, and uh, uh, oh, what is it called again? Uh, with a Domwell rock. And oh, yes, so at least I can say that I've interviewed Domwell on the show. Thank so, you very much. Thank hey, you very much. Thank you. Yeah, it was truly, it was truly. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So I've done all of that, and uh, that's it. Look, at you. you have a little bit of pride in you. No. I'm just <laughs> dropping names. I'm telling you, just, just dropping names. Drop, so. Dropping names anyhow. Uh, but now I'm playing for Jesus. So oh, that, hey, that one is the biggest out of them all. I love you that. You absolutely deserve some mm -hmm. honestly. So what attracted you to the saxophone? Say that again. What attracted you to the saxophone? Oh, uh, that's a very big one. Uh, like, I just picked it up and I find out it's very easy for eh? me. And I started playing. It's very like, easy? Oh, this Were is you good. playing any other instruments? Yeah, I do a little bit of trumpet. And uh, after some time, I start, actually started with trumpet a little bit. So when I picked up the saxophone, I'm like, wow, this is going on well. Come on, let's do it. So I started doing it. What is the difference between playing <clears throat> a trumpet and playing with a saxophone? We know they are all wind instruments. Yes. But what is the difference? Uh, no, saxophone is a wind instrument, while uh, trumpet is a brass instrument. Oh, it's not a wind yes. instrument. Uh, no, it's not. This is a wind instrument. So the other one is a brass instrument. So uh, the difference is two different intru instruments. And uh, on the trumpet, you have just only three keys, <clears throat> while on the saxophone, you have multiple keys. <laughs> You see that? I can imagine. It looks so complicated. <laughs> it, that's what it is, but you know, once you, if, like you said, you want to learn, you have the interest, you're halfway done. There we go. So take us through your journey. Did you ever see yourself being where you are today in, t in terms of being a saxophonist? Yes. And I still aspire to be more than this. So, so far, you know, I started playing the saxophone since 1997, somewhere in Ojo So. Did you know whiskey then? No. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey. I think whiskey I got whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. <laughs> by that time I, it was a baby. <laughs> so I uh, I picked up the saxophone and everything was going on well. Thank God for everything. So after then I traveled out of the country, started living in the United States. So I've been in the United States over ten years now. No and wonder I could sense a little bit of phone. I was wondering, wow, bro, where's that phone? Yeah, where's yeah. it coming from? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I live in Maryland in the United States. So I've been there for for a while. A little bit. So that's where I started my, I became an artist playing around the world. Where would you say has favored you the most? So you started playing saxophone in Nigeria. You've shared stage with several yes. amazing acts. And then you went abroad and you met several international acts as well. Correct. Which country would you say honestly favored your career as a saxophonist? Uh, it's always, you know, I won't, I'll, Nigeria is fine because Nigeria you have to do music because uh, when I was in Nigeria I was doing a whole lot of music. All my life is music, eat, sleep, saxophone. 
And uh, but when I got to United States, it's a different ball game. After going to another career, um, an IT professional, infrastructure engineer. So I have to combine that actually with it, with music. You want to ask me why am I, do I might combine? How do I combine it? It's kind of related. If you if you know that because uh, for you to know IT to be hands on engineer, you have to be very uh, you have to be very uh, you have to practice. So same thing as this. So what would you say have been the most challenging moments for you so far, taking this journey as a saxophonist, both in Nigeria and in the United States? Uh, the most challenging one is, I would say, here in Nigeria, because uh, I wish, uh, because upcoming musicians are not being respected enough the way they should, and uh, some people don't <coughs> really take them relevant. They don't think they're relevant. So, you know, uh, up there, you, it's a general thing, you have to respect people. So, I'll say Nigeria. Although, we would say that, I, I think I'd beg to differ, because I find that there are many people who have started their careers outside Nigeria, but find that the moment you're Nigerian, you don't get as much, res not because you're Nigerian, but you don't get as much respect out there as you do when you come home. We know how to celebrate our mm -hmm. own. I mean, it's why the likes of Jidena come back home, don't, you know. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm talking about from the scratch. I'm not talking about the bigger ones. Okay. It's just like somebody like me now, of course, I know. I make a lot of waves out there in the United States, so I have to come back home, which is uh, Nigeria. I have to, you know to let people know I got something that, that the world need to listen to. So this is my home country. Coming back home, you're talking about now. Is it coming to visit or you're relocating back to Nigeria? And are there plans I'm not for relocating you? back to Nigeria. I'm not relocating back to Nigeria, but I'll be visiting more So often. there's no plan for you to ever relocate back? Oh, there is a plan, but I have to post one or two things in places before. Okay, now we listen to um, one of your songs that played before we came onto the show. Mm -hmm. So take us through your journey in terms of putting music out there. What kind of genre do you focus on as a saxophonist? And where, is, there, is there anything you haven't tapped into yet that you want to tap into? <clears throat> okay, so uh, what actually... Uh, my, f my, my first um, uh, primary objective is just to affect life positively with my instrument, with what God has given to me. And... Uh, after then, I want to make sure uh, I pass a good message to people. People enjoy the music. And I know, you know, music is about people, not about you playing it. So I want to make sure I'm, I'm able to communicate to my audience, my listener, to be able to enjoy. Let's say, so when I, whenever I'm putting songs together, I have to consider that. I have to put that in place. Okay, I want to be able to relate to a layman that does not really know about music so they can enjoy it. So at the start of the show, when you were mentioning the list of influential people you've been opportune to share the stage with, mm -hmm. you mentioned you've played for Black Eyed Peas, you've played for this and that, but now you play for Jesus. Does that mean now that you're a gospel saxophone, a gospel oh, yes. musician? Absolutely. And what made you make that decision? Was that always the plan, first of all? That was it. I started from the church, so I went into secular, and I came back to so gospel. So what brought you back to gospel? <clears throat> Jesus. Okay. Would you ever think of mixing both secular with non-secular, or you want to focus <coughs> simply on gospel music? Oh, uh, that's a very big one. Uh, some, I don't want to say, so as a musician, you, you can find yourself in any way, in any environment. So, but uh, let's say if, if I'm playing a wedding, and uh, the audience, they want some high life, old school high life, or they want some hip hop, like uh, Olamide song and stuff like that, I have to I play, give it to them. But when one asks me, what do you actually do? Because I play the saxophone, I'm a gospel sax player. Okay. That's it. Let's look at how you balance out your time. So, first of all, you work as an IT professional Correct. in the United States. Correct. And you're <clears throat> also pursuing another career as a saxophonist. Yes. How much work does that, how much energy, how much virtue does that take out of you? How many hours do you have to rehearse a day? That's a good one. Okay. It's time management. So, don't forget, don't forget something. I started with music before before IT. I went into IT. IT is just for me to pay my bills. You understand? Because sometimes when there's no gig, you have to stay pay the bills. In the United States, you know how it works. <clears throat> Excuse me. So combining both of them together is just a time management. You have to, I can't, st I can't sit on the computer for 24 hours. You understand? But So when it comes to practicing, so I have to, I have, to I have a schedule. Maybe like four or five hours, or four hours sometimes to practice, score songs, practice some things that I've done in the past, make sure I can stay, my hands are still flowing on that. And at the same time, I still have to practice, oh, what is it called, uh, IT. But this is how it works most of the time for me. I stay late. I mean, 
I'm not a morning person. So I stay late at night to do IT because then people will be sleeping. I can't be blowing the saxophone because sometimes I, uh, IT allows you to work from home. So I work from home. So maybe in the morning I do a little bit. So uh, the work and uh, sometime in the middle of it, I, I do some phrases, some practicing. And afterwards, in the night, I do some other practice on the IT. That's it. Something to take away from there, Leila, would be the fact that you work from home. Yes. So you don't have to go to an office. And this no, is no, something no. that we're advocating that for. Maybe. 21st day century employers of labor. You need to understand the kind of work that your employees do. <clears throat> and if you would allow them to work comfortably from home, please, by all means, it will increase productivity and output if they can right. work from home and be flexible with their time. So long as they're meeting up with deadlines and output is not affected. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better. And that is just the way the 21st century is, you know. So it's always so refreshing having people like you here telling us about your experiences through that. Now, being a saxophonist means that you have to have a lot of breath control. Oh, yeah. How long can you hold your breath for? Forever. Hey. <laughs> okay, how long is forever? Yeah, I can hold it from now to tomorrow. Really? Yeah, you want to give me a shot? <laughs> okay, so we're going to put that to the test. We'll okay. have Abbe Cheche. Play us out of the show. Over to you. <laughs> To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.